Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 482. That's 482 of the Agostino Zynga show. How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing, good to know. If it's first time checking the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash the like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. And if you're listening via the podcast app, a five-star review and a share will help the show to go a long way. Bloody hell, here we are, melting once again as per usual, humid as ever, wiping away the sweat from my brow, but it is what it is, we do what we do. Um, How have I been keeping? Pretty decently, Um, weekend was fairly uneventful, it was due to be something a little bit extravagant, Um, I had envisaged or the plan was to head off to this um, party series at the moment in London called Guttering, where all these young fashion kids go out and play you know hyper pop and hardcore music for the best part of six hours in some incandescent venue somewhere in Wolverhampton. but then you know i decided against it because i was watching the ufc which is a fairly decent card to watch and to kind of skip the race for which was weird as well maybe again it's a another residual effect of this damned covid pandemic thing that we're living under but um that was a pretty decent evening's watching and again banged out a bunch of movies as well so loads of stuff that i kind of got into but the weekend but as per usual it's been an action-packed week of stuff in culture and whatnot so many many things to cover on the show itself if it's your first time tuning in grab yourself a little drink a little snack or if it's your second time you know what to do enjoy sit back kick back and let's dive on deep into all the necessary topics that need to be spoken about so where do we begin Number one to talk about, actually, number one news, which has just been confirmed within the last couple of minutes. Lionel Messi has agreed to join Paris Saint-Germain on a two-year contract after leaving Barcelona. News that shocked the football world maybe a couple of weeks ago because we were under the impression that this little will-he-won't-he dance that Messi was doing with Barcelona would inevitably lead to him signing a contract um, extension just because of the value that he brings to that club. Let alone, Don't get me wrong, it is because of the skill and obviously what he can bring to a team but in terms of just the value and the brand you know you wouldn't want to be the the director of football the president in charge of Barcelona who decided to kind of you know rescind the contract and not offer Messi uh, an extension on his deal you wouldn't want to be that guy but then in some quarters there was some suggestion out there being said that whole oh, this Barcelona team actually needs um, a kick in the a kick in the balls per se right they need to get a jolt they need some they need a shift in uh in their identity they need a shift in how they basically re- and their reliance how they play and maybe the best way to go about it is to basically sell your talisman sell your marquee player sell the person where the entire football goes through him because you know rightly he is the best player in the world and kind of maybe evolve into a more cohesive team unit and if you think about it from the previous regimes maybe people would say the point where Messi was the best team player maybe for Barcelona was when he was coached under Pep right it was a bit more of a key system but then again they had far better players than they do nowadays regardless um you didn't really think it would ever happen and now it finally has happened you actually see Messi here in this picture um standing outside I think it's at the airport or window of his apartment somewhere you know soaking all the love from the Parisian fans at PSG and the article says the following now Messi has agreed to join Paris Andrew on a two-year contract. The six-time Ballon d'Or winner, six-time, god damn it, arrives in Paris Tuesday afternoon to still his move to the French club on a two-year deal with an option to a third worth 25 point 25 million, sorry, point, 25 million per year after tax plus bonuses, which is quite insane. I think the at the figure that people are coming up to is about 30 million a year which then kind of equals about 500 to 650,000 per week that he's getting from Barcelona, sorry, from Paris Saint-Germain, which again, makes complete sense, but it's just interesting to see the amount of revenue or the amount of money Paris Saint-Germain are willing to kind of part with in order to secure his transfer makes me think straight away when I see those numbers, how much is he generating for that club? He must be generating because there's no way, you know, m- for the most part, most clubs, unless you're United, they don't just throw away in contracts willy nilly. If they're giving you a contract, they're mostly calculating that they can get more out of you than you can get out of them, right? Because in their eyes, you know, paying you 650 a week is relatively chump change in exchange for what they get. And if you read what you, if you believe what you read on Twitter, supposedly they put up the shirts um, the official Lionel Messi 30 shirts on the PSG website and they sold out in less than a second, right? I'm sorry, less than a minute, which is absolutely insane. So 
so of course you know you'd, you'd imagine they'd get back their um their investment and some plus all the other stuff they're going to do in terms of branding and he's probably going to do interviews on all the other stations in terms of middle east and all that stuff you know loads of stuff to come for it but it says here the french um club posted a twitter video teasing his arrival accompanied with the words new diamond in paris with a press conference scheduled on wednesday morning um it continues with messi who also received a 25 million signing on f- I didn't see about that. You received a 25 million signing on fee as part of the move and was extended to the 21 year stay of Barcelona by signing a new five year deal this summer. However, the club announced on Thursday that the financial structure obstacles meant that the deal could not be complete. Hold on. Messi will receive. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, the 34 year old said that he, started, he wanted to stay at Barcelona and did everything that he could to remain in the club, including agreeing the 50% wage cut, which again wasn't much of a wage cut if you're, but if you're Messi. And also, if you really look at the numbers, the wage cut wasn't really a wage cut. If anything, it just spread his what he'd get in the year over five. You know, so it's like, is it really a wage cut? Um, it continues, especially if he reaches all his milestones and goals and whatnot. He's easily going to clear that money. But it continues. However, Barcelona are, ham- are hamstrung by La Liga's rules on club spending and having half. So have and even having Messi's pay was not enough. Messi had two other options after leaving Barcelona last week, but has opted to join PSG with their potential to compete for major trophies, including the Champions League, understood to be the key factor in the decision to move to France, which again, makes sense, but. Messi is also believed to be keen to reunite with Neymar, with whom he won two La Liga titles, three Copa del Rey, and the Champions League during a time at Barcelona. Asked about a move to PSG at his farewell press conference last week, he said there's one possibility to reach these heights. I had a lot of clubs call, a lot of interested clubs at the moment. Nothing is closed, but we're talking about a lot of things. But of course, that's all been confirmed now. Is it last bit here? Messi said he did not want to leave. The, the emotional tear. But yeah, the, the tears have definitely dried up now that he's kind of secured that big bank deal, mate. The tears have 100% cried. And um, there's final kind of clarity that the deal has been done and sorted and all the dot- I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed. Here's a video courtesy of Paris Saint-Germain pinned on their profile. It's already at 7.5 million views. It's only been released a couple of minutes ago. And it's already doing numbers. God damn it, my computer's running mad slow. Anyway, doesn't matter. You get the gist. Let's just take off the thing, the sound, because my computer's running like on a madness. Like I've got a million applications running, but I don't, don't know what's going on here. But let's press it again. Let's just see if we can play in the background. It's basically a video of them of it panning outside the Paris Saint Germain merch shop, scanning through, and I guess it goes out to the back and Messi stood there with his foot on the ball, on in in the stadium somewhere. I'm assuming that's what it probably leads out to because I'm assuming the merch shop is right, located right near the football stadium itself. And of course, there's a nice retail assistant there working, whilst everyone else is away at home sleeping. She's there working because retail you never sleep, you never rest. They're on just fingers days off. The camera pans out into the foyer area, looks like. I think, the, is it the shop right across the street from where the stadium is? I think I read that. And it goes, is it going? There we go. It passes through, back out to the stadium, it looks like. BMW new webcam. The stadium looks lovely, doesn't it? I wish he, what's Old Trafford look like that? But, you know, maybe that's too much to ask. One of the richest clubs in the world to have a stadium that looks, you know, state-of-the-art, modern. Way too much to ask for that, innit? It's scanning through, it's going through the corridors, into the train, into the, sorry, um, into the changing room. You see one shirt hung up on a the wall. They don't quickly scan it. They continue going on because they want to show you the play on the pitch, I'm assuming. Hurry up, hurry up. It's a well done video, don't get me wrong, but too much wasting of time here. Back out to the main tunnel. And then as they head up to the pitch, you see Messi standing there with his foot on the ball, I'm assuming. Right? Oh my God, this video is so long winded, isn't it? longwinded.com the scans are around the stadium and then we finally get to the bit where Messi's meant to be standing in the middle of the pitch right is it okay scans up go back on the pitch is he there in the center circle yep there he is boom Messi 30 insane in it absolutely wild times what a wild time to be alive what a wild time to be alive um I guess initial impressions of this would be it obviously put some really big pressure on Pochettino. Um, if ever there was a realisation that it doesn't really matter what he does in the league, 
he has to win it by default and it doesn't really matter what he does in the domestic cups he has to win those by default the most important trophy he has to ensure that he secures for Paris Saint-Germain is the Champions League they don't really there's no real if buts and maybes he's operating on the highest echelons of football he's kind of coaching one of the most expensively assembled teams in the history especially when you consider what their weekly salaries are big names big egos they're gonna have to win the champions league and the champions league is one of the notoriously most difficult champions leagues one of the most difficult notorious sorry difficult trophies to win so there's no guarantees there they're gonna win it right there is none guarantees like there's so many other great teams who are under pressure to put their best foot forward in europe as well who aren't gonna you know accept it lying down the, some teams are going to find accept it as a challenge to see that you know PSG have signed such a decorated player they're going to want to kind of you know prove that they can compete at that level too with those players that they're given so it's no makes no difference so it's a big deal man it's a real 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 big deal um and again for for Pochettino you know he really needs to deliver if, if ever there was the time to do away with the idea that you're a choker this would be it you need everybody to you need to give everybody a reminder that no I'm a top class manager and what better way to do it than to win the Champions League the first one with Messi but I don't want also if Pochettino does win it with Messi in his team, I don't want people to say like, oh yeah, it's tainted because he's got Messi because come on, let's let's be fair. Do you know what I mean? If he doesn't win it, he's a joke of a manager, which I don't agree with. But if he does win it, people are going to be saying he's only won it because he's got the most expensively assembled teams in modern history. Cool, it doesn't matter. The fact remains, winning one of those, winning a European Cup, especially in the modern era that we're in now, it's just difficult. It's just much, much difficult. There's a more, I wouldn't say... There's not a monopoly on good players, really. You know, the Real Madrid's and the Barcelona don't just have all the good players all the time. They're spread out amongst most of the leagues, especially the top, the top paying leagues. So you have to, you know, you don't have always have the best players. There's not a, an abundance of amazing coaches out there anymore. So of course you're not competing with the best of the best at all the times. So to actually win it at this level is far more difficult than I would assume would have won it back in the day. Even though, you know, it could be argued those part better coaches and players still, the concentration of players, I think, is more spread out overall. There's a lot more players that are generally good or at a high level in loads of different teams. So it makes competition far more harder. And again, there's not a lot to separate them because most coaches, with the exception of a couple, are mostly on the same level, especially the younger ones coming up. They've still got to make a name for themselves, right? The Nagelsmann's, the Klops, not the Klops, not Klops the Lagunas, the Potches, all these guys coming up have still got to make a name for themselves. So there's a lot of work to be done in that regard. But yeah, Messi's at PSG. Who would have ever guessed it, innit? Who would have ever guessed it? But, you know, when somebody offers you a, what's that, 25 mil contract, you know, after tax minus the bonuses, you're probably going to jump at the calls. But it's just interesting to see that no other club came about to try and sign him, which maybe is a good representation or good reflection on how well run PSG are don't get me wrong they've got oil money fair enough and you know their resources are a little bit unfair compared to other clubs but in terms of creating an infrastructure of an actual proper football club that wants to win things it's just annoying that we seem to have billionaires owners in the Glazers at United who seem to want to do everything but invest in a team and create a structure and a culture that would kind of foster great footballing achievement as the number one thing as opposed to being a business but then these other teams have this dirty money quote unquote but they have people who actually want to they want the glory they want to be known as an owner of a team that wins league titles that win champions leagues i mean it's a such a big disconnect in that regard but maybe the fact that they got this deal done so quickly is a good representation of how well they run that they were able to kind of pounce it maybe again they were in preparation already because they were in talks last year when Messi had first kind of let it be known he went to leave but the fact that they were able to get it done so quickly um and obviously they seemed that they were the only team really that were in for a fighting chance of signing him goes to show that you know the other teams in the world like they just don't know what they're doing really. they've kind of everyone's kind of got their finger in their asses isn't it for the most part and you would imagine of all the players that could be on the open market the one player you'd assume most teams would try even the top ones just to attempt to try and sign him would be Messi, right? If Messi and Ronaldo are on the transfer market, Ronaldo, you could probably get away with not signing, right? He's a little bit more one-dimensional. Maybe he's not as um, ex especially explosive as Messi is nowadays in his older age. He's a bit more of a kind of, uh, you know, 
a striker that basically lives inside that box. He's still going to score, of course, you know, some an outlandish goal or two here and there, but he's just a quintessential, you know, tapping merchant for the for the lack of a better, better term. But with Messi, you've got somebody that can legitimately change the entire kind of outlook of a game on a dime. Do you know what I mean? Still, even now, his age, you'd think people would want to try and sign somebody of that level, but some people just you know just weren't at the races and i guess here we are now messi signed for psg that psg 30 shirt is going to be everywhere people are going to be you know I'd, I'd i'd love to see the amount of people are going to be tuning into psg matches on a daily watching them playing sporting you know watching them play flipping sit and you know all these nonsense teams will be sick to see but yeah I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I like seeing a healthy European um, footballing landscape in general, you know. And again, I'm, I just like seeing the fact that he's testing himself um, by playing in another league. It's just good to see in terms of a fan, you know, a football thing, just to see him, you know, it's not going to be much of a test because, you know, Liga isn't really up there with La Liga, but still, you just want to see him play against different players week in, week out, different environment, different teammates, see what happens, see what vibes. Even the Sergio Ramos storyline is interesting too, you know, long time enemies and foes when they're playing for their respective teams in Barcelona and Real Madrid and now their teammates like oh it's gonna be epic man it's gonna be epic what else did I get up to during the week oh yeah this is it um so I rewatched The Martian right Ridley Scott's The Martian I'm sure most of you have kind of checked it out it's you know the movie came out in 2015 it's not overly new or everything but it's interesting watching it nowadays vis-a-vis -vis when I watched it when it came out I think at the time, you know, still nowadays, I have a very, um, I'm incredibly interested or fascinated with space travel. Um, I'm well, in, I'm interested in space in general. Um, I kind of follow loads of, you know, random YouTube channels that cover everything to do with space flight, space, you know, discovery of new planets, all this all malarkey that might go on, making us a multi multi planetary species in the name of Elon Musk. And I think when I originally watched The Martian, the idea of, you know, being a kind of lone ranger on this martian planet after a bit of a mishap in terms of his original crew and the kind of you know the engineering and science that went into allowing him to survive for a prolonged period of time with a really limited amount of rations and all that malarkey it just fascinated me i was like wow this is amazing this basically puts into practice all the stuff that i've kind of read about in books and seen in documentaries and watched on youtube videos and you're seeing this person kind of live out this entire sort of fantasy and process of being an astronaut you know and and kind of again uh, being a multi-planetary species and trying to establish life and a colony and all this malarkey and another planet and it seemed just fascinating it seemed mind-blowing but then for whatever reason watching it now it just seems so depressingly lonely it just seems so bereft of hope. It just seems like, it, for lack of a better term, torture. And I wonder if it's just more so a reflection on growing up a little bit, or if it's more so a reflection on this kind of post-COVID time we're living in, where the last thing you want to see is a movie about somebody in a harrowing place where they're basically on their own for a prolonged period of time with little to no idea when that kind of hell is going to end right um you're kind of hoping other people are going to put things into place that are going to allow you to kind of you know uh what be welcome back into society or have an opportunity to kind of see your family again and the amount of time that goes by because obviously you have to wait for certain um gravitation we have to work for certain rotations in terms of you timing your um leaving of the planet to you know use the gravitational pull in order to come back to earth so so much time elapses right a lot of time passes between um the actor of matt damon being stranded on the martian planet to when he has any hope of trying to get back to earth and you just think you just off oh, jesus man it's bad enough you know coming to the realization that we're fast approaching two years of living under covid right two years where most of us haven't had the ability to live our quote-unquote normal lives um, two years where you know you've basically not done much because you know the world's been in a complete standstill that's bad enough and then imagine having to live with the kind of having to accept the reality that you put yourself in a situation by volunteering to be an astronaut in order to go on this mission that went disastrously wrong and now you're in a place where let alone you're not sure if you're gonna come back but 
in the process of trying to come back many many years elapses like two three four five six years goes by until you have any hope of trying to come back and what world do you come back to what does your family look like your relationships how are you as a person we're already seeing so many accounts of people in the <coughs> in like a post-covid world i think i read a twitter thread the other day somebody asked about oh what's um what's one way you've changed your personality wise post COVID. And I think she mentioned something to get the conversation started. Like, Oh, she doesn't know when to stop talking. Like in kind of like small, kind of, you know, what's that thing called? Uh, I don't know what that thing's called. What's it called when you kind of just shoot the shit with people at a party? It's not like small talk. She doesn't know how to end small talk. She said that one of the things that she loved about herself was the idea that she was very good at kind of being able to drop in and out of small talk and pop in, you know, you know, contribute this amount of information and not get too into the weeds with stuff. You know, the kind of, the skill you learn when you've kind of interacted with real life human beings because, you know, there is a time in your life where you think everyone cares about your holiday pictures and then after a couple of times of showing people pictures of yourself sunbathing in in Greece you start to realize that no people don't actually care about your pictures they just want to hear your anecdotes or your little stories keep it two to three minutes and then keep it moving but no one wants to hear you know an entire regurgitation or entire rundown of what you did but again you only learn that when you actually talk to people so imagine not having that ability and then being in a social setting again and somebody asking you how's life you might be inclined to be like well thanks for asking and then you know just start firing off an entire essay or entire ted talk worth of content which no one really wanted or no one really asked for and i think she mentioned something like that in her friend and i was like wow man that's 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 like mad isn't it to think people have had these um entire shifts in personality in such a short period of time right um which then leads me to think imagine how much your personality would have changed if you're stranded on an alien planet imagine right a bleak um hazardous and again that's something that they did really well because i think the book um the book the book is amazing right and i think it was yeah I remember andy where I, I read the book a few years ago when it, the film originally came out oh no when the film was being optioned i bought the book so i could kind of read the book first before the movie came out and i really enjoyed the book and the book is similar to like hands may tell where i wouldn't say the book is better than the movie I'd say the, they're both two entirely different things, but they can live, they can kind of coexist. You know, some movies, the book is far better than the movie or the movie is far better than the book. A good example, modern day one would be like The Great Gatsby. There's nothing that beats reading The Great Gatsby for the first time and kind of imagining that whole <coughs> plot playing out in your head and all little intricate details. But the movie does a fairly good job of kind of depicting um, that entire story, but it's still beneficial to read to read the book first of course before you will actually watch the movie but jesus christ man what the what they do really well about the movie is how they depict how harrowingly dangerous it is to travel to such a foreign planet especially with its unpredictable climate and weather and just the unpredictability of you know um uh being on another planet in general um you know when of course you know not in the spoiler because the movie came out many years ago but when the storm happens or when he kind of incorrectly tapes or puts together the whatever tent he's got where the he's growing his garden and it blows through and it kind of kills all his crops it's just like just when he thought he's kind of had a bit of hope and there was some light at the end of the tunnel so him to kind of save himself suddenly it gets kind of eviscerated out of the blue and again maybe it's just a reflection on how the years have gone that's made me change it but i was watching it i was thinking i don't know why this was so inspiring to me it's still inspiring don't get me wrong to see um that especially off the back of what spacex did the other day where they were able to fully stack um starship on top of a booster right that's still incredible to see but when i first watched it it was far more inspiring than it was when i watched it now when i watched it now i was like god damn this is macabre this is a dark movie right it's a bit of a bummer don't get me wrong by the end it finishes off pretty well it kind of is optimistic but maybe it isn't again the ending again no spoiler alert because you know he came ages ago but the ending is like what he just goes back into his he just kind of goes back home and decides to just pick up where he left off from and just you know decided to give that same spiel that he was given before he left on the rocket to go to another planet to the new recruits in hope that they would be the next martians it's like after everything you suffer from why wouldn't you want these young kids to throw away five to ten years of their lives in order to pursue what a wasteland of a planet you know um far outside our solar system that not many people will actually benefit from at all if any it's just like it's an interesting it's a fucking interesting place to be in in it but 
Um, again, if you haven't checked out before, I rec definitely recommend you check it out. The Martian starring Matt Damon, a really, really good movie. Like I said, you don't really need to read the book to watch the movie before, but if you do, I do recommend it because the book does really bring a different sort of layer and kind of panic to the whole um, story. If you watch the movie, you know what I mean. But the movie does do a good job in kind of depicting that entire scenario. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. Okay, get rid of that. What else do you want here? Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, this is what happened next. Yeah, then I watched um, what was I? I was watching so many random things on the old tube in it. <clears throat> then I'm watching the debut of at DJ Academics podcast, which is going to be hosted on Spotify. Um, ironically enough, especially when you consider what happened with Joe Biden and his podcast, you know, um, fallout with Spotify and their lack of being able to negotiate. But it seems like um, Spotify have decided to sign up DJ Academics. I've not really seen any official press for it so far as to what the terms are and all that malarkey, but considering how Bosey he's talking, I'm assuming you've got a pretty good deal. So congrats to him. And he decided to come out, out of the gates, you know, shooting and not taking any prisoners by having a sit down interview with WAC 100 hundred um the infamous what would you call it the infamous um west coast gang member manager guy right goon and six nine the again the infamous uh snitch and they sat down for a very interesting conversation that if anything made me more perplexed as to why certain rappers who purport to be gangsters who purport to live a certain kind of life who don't agree with what 6ix9ine does or did why they would want to react to him in any kind of way because he's clearly somebody who's decided a very long time ago that he doesn't care if he lives or dies and he's just in it to create chaos like he it's really really does remind me a lot of the character of um of the joker in the in the dark knight right the, the first one um the first uh dark knight right yeah the first one he reminds me of that in terms of the idea of just what what did um what did the butler say to batman in one of the bits something like oh some people just like to see the world burn in it they just like to see the chaos and i think because batman trying to figure out or bruce wayne was trying to figure out what's the what's the joker's objectives like what is he trying to get out from this like what's he trying to do, 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 do? And it's like no it might not be a power play it might just be him just wanting to see shit go up in flames and i think 6 9 has seen the other side of things obviously having gone through what he went through in the terms of the trial um and in terms of him kind of going on stand and the the kind of backlash that came from that and now he's just like you know what i just want to see everything burn and i'm going to take whoever i can down with me and it seems like he wants to take people down with him and people are willingly kind of stepping up to the plate and engaging in, in a guy that clearly has nothing to lose it feels like he does obviously because he has a family he has a kid he has maybe a couple of kids but he's acting like he doesn't so i don't know why everyone else is kind of willing to go with him like on this journey because in my opinion there's only going to be one winner <coughs> and so far he's had a really strong ability to effectively avoid any kind of karmic retribution for the things that he's done which you know is not my place to say because again i'm no karma god but you'd imagine for the amount of people he's put into jail especially the ones that you know had done nothing to him personally you would imagine it'd be some level of karmic retribution but so far he's been able to avoid it and you know who knows why who knows what who knows it's not my place to say but the interview was interesting in the fact that more so that this is maybe the only the first one where for once we saw six down on the back foot and we also saw him not question but we also saw him put in a place where he couldn't kind of say the way that he acts is quote-unquote a gangster and he wasn't excused no one like what kind of didn't give him a out in terms of his reasoning of snitching which is always kind of perplexed me because you would imagine you know if you decided to live a certain way of life that you will just accept everything that comes with it and i would imagine part of what comes with it is that the people you work with aren't necessarily the most stand-up of people right because that's the whole reason why you work with them because they're willing to do things that most people wouldn't want to do which is you know perfectly fine and reasonable so to be in a position of six nine and be like oh 
the reason why I snitched on these people or the reason why I told the reason why I gave them up was because they weren't loyal to me because they supposedly slept with my baby mother they supposedly were the ones I kidnapped or well, not supposedly they did kidnap him bloody blah 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 it's just it just doesn't it just doesn't seem like a good enough reason in my opinion to do something like that if you just do it you just decide you do it because you just want to because you don't want to spend you know too much time in prison it makes complete sense i'm sure going to jail even for that short period of time was a good realization to realize you know what i don't want to live this life but to excuse your behavior because allegedly the scumbaggy people that you hang around with did scumbaggy things it's just a bit it's a bit of a mad one really i don't really necessarily agree with that in that respect and also i would imagine there were some people within there must be some people that were you know snitched or on or were basically brought down off the back of that one case who had nothing to do with the alleged kidnapping or even the supposed smashing of his baby mother which i still debate if that even happened but even if it did would they didn't all do it supposedly i don't imagine she let the entire nine tray run a complete train on her that would be completely insane let's say she was in a relationship with a couple of those guys who knows maybe one do they all deserve to go down because of that one person i don't necessarily know so that was cool to see him push back on that regard um but i don't know man i just think it was a fascinating thing to watch and the backlash from it as well has been mad in it you've got 69 versus 21 you've got 69 versus all these random and why goons on clubhouse like so many random things have kind of spilled off the back of it and it's just a wild place to be where you've got all these multi-millionaires right for the most part or people that maybe you know, high thousand there's but people who are living a very affluent lifestyle you know um operating within the music industry which is again a point one percent industry not everybody gets a chance to make money in music but they, these are people who are um they're very successful people from minority backgrounds you know who've come from the gutter work their way up put themselves on be able to provide for their families give opportunity to people in the local communities and they're still sat here debating and arguing about who's the biggest baddest gangster of them all like none of you guys are do you know what i mean none of you guys are like you send your kids to private schools you get driven around in cars you have armored security next to you like what is this like such a bizarre place to be where people are trying to outscore each other in terms of gangster points like i will never understand it like it's, it's one thing just being a gangster and then rapping right fair but this like millionaire thing is just utterly utterly bizarre this millionaire gangster thing is something that i've never really understood but it does remind me some time ago i remember when i was like i don't know how old i must have been it doesn't matter there was some time ago there was a kid in our school who was extremely talented at football one of maybe only a few people that you know had the opportunity to make it out pro club really really young and again at that time in my area um for the places i'm from you know the only way to make it out legitimately was obviously to do music or to play football but even at that time music thing wasn't really too big because everyone had seen what happened to like roll deep you know what i mean they got into music doing one thing and then as soon as they got into that kind of mainstream cycle they made them make that fucking shitty traffic light song in it so the 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 way of making music nowadays and being your authentic self wasn't on the table back in the day so the only real option to come out of the hood was sports so if one of your friends was able to become pro you automatically looked at him like he was flipping prince harry i mean you're like oh my god you've made it you're set for life and one of those kids in our school obviously made it very very early and he had everything kind of you know on a plate for him he represented england really early his district like just went through all the necessary steps in order to become a full-time pro and again it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't become a premier league football player but the fact that you're able to play professional football and you're able to pay your wages by just kicking a ball around is the dream making you know, them 10 grand a week playing in the championship who cares it's still good money and then suddenly i don't know he disappeared off the face of the map and then i think i randomly bumped into him at like a bus stop somewhere in like custom house and he had on like no t-shirt he had like a pit bull with him with with a massive kind of chain wrapped around his hand you know his trousers are un, you know you know exposing his boxes and stuff walking around like a goon and i remember just looking at him and just like talking to me about stuff and i just couldn't i couldn't figure it out i was like this guy was never a goon was never somebody that was about any kind of street life at all and suddenly in the period of what a couple of years maybe less than that he had suddenly transformed himself completely and given himself up to the streets when that was never a part of his lifestyle and it just perplexed me i could never understand it i was like it's one thing if you were always from that 
and then football kind of took you out of it and then you got injured and then here you are surrounded by the bad influences again but he was never about that life he was always kind of well, well adjusted family even though he had a single mum she raised him really well they were very well to do she cared about education like he used to get a lot of trouble if he didn't get good grades and shit like he was one of those kind of rare black boys in the ends where you know sorry one of those kind of rare black boys from like a single parent household where his mum was on job like you know even though she was working full time so it, it just didn't make any sense to me and you see this guy you know a couple of years later and he's topless with tattoos and stuff holding a, a dog with a massive chain you're like what the fuck is this and it was pathetic at that time and that guy was again was at level so when i'm seeing people like whack and six nine and you know arguing over stuff like this i'm like especially for wax case like these guys like 50 years old with like kids and a wife and shit and you're like raging and arguing about people about gangster stuff and he wants to fight 21 and it's like that's why i said at the end of the day this whole thing the only person that wins is six nine he's the only one that wins really he wants all this attention anyway you know because by and large you know the industry has decided to kind of cancel his career he doesn't get on playlists anymore the only thing that kind of goes viral at the moment is his interviews and his antics online no one really cares about his musical output anymore for the most part he's not really got the opportunity to collaborate with big name acts because they don't want the negative attention so the only thing that he can do is just make a spectacle of himself and people are willing to kind of join with the spectacle and then complain when the spectacle starts spectacling it's just it's just bizarre I, re I just do not understand and again even if I was a goon I'd be like if I didn't agree with his way of life I just wouldn't talk to the guy I wouldn't mention him he'd just be dead to me I mean I wouldn't be wasting my time being on clubhouse it was shouting into a phone because ju just imagine the scene of seeing some hardened gangster somewhere with his hand clutched into his boxer shorts you know gripping onto some something whilst he's shouting with his, with his hand on his phone in the other hand like come on like it's just so pathetic i find it so utterly utterly pathetic but i don't know i guess if you're really about that life maybe any slight rep any kind of slight misrepresentation whether it's on the internet social media and club ice is going to make you you know get riled and not get un hot under the collar but there truly must be better things to worry about than whether or not 6ix9ine is a civilian or a gangster or not did he snitch or not is he real or not like who cares man who really cares like <coughs> i just don't get it but if you haven't watched it do check it out it's a really good interview it's three hours long though so i probably don't recommend watching it if you don't like hearing people talk around talking circles because after about the one hour mark they basically repeat themselves for about two hours but if you're interested to find out you know to learn more about what 100 especially and 69 as two really bizarro individuals on probably two sides of the same coin then definitely check out the interview definitely give you a good understanding of what those guys are about in general it definitely will next on the list what else do we have here <laughs> oh yeah we have good news courtesy of ra courtesy of ra ra here reports scotland reopens for the first time in almost two years see as more time goes on certain people like jesus christ man two years numerous opening reopening parties were held after covid19 restrictions were lifted on sunday night amid consistent decline in covid19 cases and a rise in vaccination rates in scotland the country lifted most of its restrictions after a 500 day hiatus sunday night at midnight clubs were allowed to reopen after a guidance from the scottish government stated that club goers were allowed to go on mask while dancing drinking and dining among the clubs to re return were the buff club pictured which reopened at 12 12 1 a.m just imagine right how bleak and boring life was in london to live without the possibility of going clubbing and just imagine for the most part or you know spare a fall for our people in north of the border or north north of london where you know you would imagine it's far more colder you know far more dreary place to live and the, probably the only thing that does give you some kind of joy is the ability to meet up your friends and frolic and dance under a disco ball somewhere and get completely levered and do un, you know uh in copious amounts of flipping pingers and whatnot right that's what kind of brings you life and you not be able to do that now suddenly getting it back must be like heaven 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 so i can only imagine that how they were going through prior so big up there anyway it continues here said scottish first minister nicola sturgeon explained the changes in the country we'll see as it moves beyond level zero the closest to normal in scotland's roadmap of lifting lockdown the move beyond level zero will entail the lifting of most of the remaining legal imposed most notably on physical 
distancing and limits the size of social gatherings. It also means from August 9th, no venues will be legally required to close. This change is significant and, and hard earned. The sacrifices everyone has made over the past year and a half can never be overstated. So yeah, big up everybody. And of course, you've got a video here showing a club reopening, but I'm not going to play it because my computer is being a bit janky. The computer here said, it continues here, sorry, it says Sturgeon also mentioned the possibility of producing uh, vaccine passports similar, so introducing vaccine passports similar to those that are recently launched in places like Italy and France and that left protocol. It says, I also can confirm that we continue to consider very carefully the possible of like limited use of COVID status certificate for access of certain higher risk venues in the future. So yeah, big up people in Scotland. You've got your clubs back. You've got your clubs back. <laughs> What else? Sorry about that. Let's move on. Let's take this out of the thing. Hopefully it's loads. Oh yeah, this is it. Then we've got an update here, courtesy of Resident Advisor again. This time announcing the new Printworks up and coming club nights. So it says here, Printworks reveals details of forthcoming club nights. Chemical Brothers, Amelia Lens, Actress, and among the names confirmed to play over the London club's autumn winter season. So I don't think they've, have they been open properly just yet? I'm not too sure, but tickets have been selling out, you know, um, hand over fist. People have been gagging to go back to that venue again. You know, I'm not really the biggest fan of the place, but in terms of a spectacle, in terms of a place to go, um, especially post-COVID, it's definitely a location I'd probably have on my list in terms of just going as to an event. But in terms of a rave, it's, mm, it's, it can be a bit off, but I, I get it. So I found, anyway, continue. So I found the club print works has unveiled details of its autumn winter events program. It says, in a press release today over 35 shows running from september the 17th until january the 1st have been announced the open weekend on september the 17th to the 19th sees the first edition of redacted which operates with a no phones on a dance floor policy with lineups only announced of the day which again is admirable but considering the crowd that they attract it's a little bit redundant because you're definitely going to find a picture or two or more or video on social media on the day of that event but you know it can't help to try it says october will see sound crash with john hopkins model s uh, Modest Leska, sorry, actress among along with the Hacienda Classical, the Regenerate Nights curated by Clapton and Green Velvet. That has to end the classical, mate. White people love that shit, innit? They love classical kind of... But I get it, innit? Because if you lived during that has to end the era, to see them sort of like, you know, give a rendition with a classical music set, a classical orchestra, whatever it may be, um, it's definitely going to bring back some nostalgic thoughts for you. But it's just it's just funny. It just reminds you of that kind of classical techno shit they do. But anyway, it says in November, Printworks also play host to sets from Todd Turge and an alien Monsieur Plex with Amelie Lenz headlining the XL party. So just when we thought we were kind of rid of Amelia Lenz her and her flipping skinny arms going to be back again wailing in the air playing dredgy fucking top 50 you know beat poor techno like nothing changes and everything remains the same no everything yeah everything remains the same in the dance music in the post-covid which again is not a bad thing because as much as these people are you know a little bit redundant and boring they also need a way to make a living. You know what I mean? That's the real weird part about all this discourse that exists where people be like, oh, how can you book certain artists that are playing playgraves and all this monarchy? It's like, yeah, they were playing the playgraves because they needed the money to eat. And now that the clubs are open, they need the money to survive and to pay their rents. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't exactly blame these guys for deciding to take the gigs. Like, those playgraves as well, looking back, it's never really, in my opinion, it was never really the fault of the the contractors the independent contractors the years ago and play it's more so on the unscrupulous promoters and the people kind of taking advantage of lax governmental restrictions right those are the people that really should be held to account especially the ones who are from that country the ones that are purposely putting their own fellow citizens at risk by putting on a rave in order to line their pockets there should be more to blame than a dj who had been hired to play this event i don't think they have really any say in if the event goes on or off right because they're not organizing it if there's one thing i know being a promoter and obviously doing my DJ thing on the side is that the one thing that you can never really the one thing that's very difficult to get a DJ to do is to promote a party even if it's just sharing something on their social media feed right they're notoriously just you know um and uncooperative when it comes to that kind of stuff maybe because they just don't think it's something that they need to do because they're being booked to play or because they're lazy it doesn't matter but you know it's not as if these guys are organizing these events they were the ones just playing them so I don't know, man. It's just interesting to see people arguing about who should be playing these events post lockdowns, but then also not 
realizing or kind of being compassionate to the idea that these people who are the business techno kind of tier a people they still need to make a living do you know what i mean it's not like you know emily lens doesn't have bills to pay you know what i mean like i'm sure she has a perfectly you know um good reasons as to why she did what she did prior and it is what it is who gives a shit it's just funny to just see the same names again it's just funny mostly in my opinion because people made such a big stink about things changing when they obviously weren't going to change and i knew it from the start because you know the reality is that these places have to make money too they have been closed for two years they need to ensure that they sell out you know events before they even launched and they have to sell over a certain amount to make it viable and the hiring of security is already going to cost them an arm and a leg i mean it's a lot goes into putting on the club now especially at that scale so to expect them to just be like booking your friends that you know because you know they haven't got a look it's just a little bit naive but it's just interesting to see in black and white um december sees uh nausea playing their first ever london show and bugged out chemical brothers with a dj set another one for the white man them um the season closes out with a from our mind party which will bring richie horton robert hood and a live set from octave one oof that would be bad um additionally print was recently revealed inkwells a space within the building which has made us which has been made open to the public for the first time which serves an additional room at the selected venues read below for more details blah de, blah 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 so yeah um big big list of events coming forward for print works again you know most of those tickets will probably end up selling up especially for the better ones so make sure you jump on those tickets asap and like i said enjoy for what it is it might not be the best it might not be the most full it might be the most um what you call it progressive or you know pushing of the envelope lineups and programming but it still serves a good place in terms of um the london clubbing landscape do you know what i mean the ability to see these people playing in such a kind of well put together place that has you know great production value and sound and all that malarkey is good so def check it out if you're that way inclined def check it out am i still like fucking bugging out i don't know if it's bugging out still yeah i'm just a little bit right then um what else do we see do, 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 do. Bu, 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 bu. oh yeah then we saw let's get this off the list is this me on my screen just am i going like buggy and slow i, mean, I think i'm going buggy and slow but anyway, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. then over the weekend we had um the final well we did a final we we got to see the starship uh be placed upon the booster uh sorry the super heavy booster right at spacex let's see if i can load this up why is this why is my computer running so slow today i don't really know why for some reason it's running super super slow anyway for, for it's taking a while to load but regardless spacex finally had the opportunity to place the starship on top of the booster on the orbital launch pad which is going to be the place where they're going to lift off and land with the kind of mechanical kind of grip thing that's going to be able to catch it from midair and <coughs> the pictures alone are fa fabulous right seeing um the starship itself with all its heat shields being placed on one side to help it with re-entry and the super heavy booster with its grid fins and how big it is and the scale and the amount of you know rocket sorry um rocket engines that are on the bottom of it as well it's just literally amazing to see but i do understand considering everything that's going on in context when you kind of kind of you know in contrast sorry to what's going on in the world what this is you know and who is going to actually help and how much impact is going to have chef for humanity in the you know in the present years i can see why people think it's a bit of a waste of time but i just can't you know the little kid inside of me can't not be excited of seeing a massive rocket being put together that's going to be fully reusable and it's also going to hopefully take people to you know different planets within our solar system and maybe make us a multiplanetary species somewhere down the future it's just not it's just hard not to get excited about something like that it really isn't especially when you think about the person in charge of it or the person that kind of speared in the project and elon musk and the fact that he's a legitimate you know engineer as well as a kind of serial entrepreneurial kind of guy right it's one of the rare cases of somebody that actually walks a walk especially in the area of people who kind of talk a lot of shit online about how to make money all this sort of stuff it's good to see somebody i'm gonna say people you know people some people refer to him as a guru but somebody that kind of is, is really high regarded and people like fanboy over who actually does walk the walk right? i mean what it's one of the rare cases of it the only thing that's probably difficult for people to kind of reconcile with when it comes to elon is the fact that he's so 
obsessed with fame clearly he enjoys the limelight he enjoys being the ceo maverick kind of real life iron man guy so it's kind of difficult to it's kind of difficult to kind of uh pass that and accept it um whilst you can somehow also feel that he might be doing good for the world and then i, I don't know it's it, i understand the conflict that comes in it and you know maybe his personality in general is a bit grating or whatnot but I, I just think it's 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 mind blowing to see this being built in real time, and to maybe have the possibility of actually seeing it go, um, orbital right in test flight and splash back into the whatever Atlantic Ocean, is going to be just incredible to see, and the fact that it's kind of shaping up slowly but surely and looking pretty similar to a lot of the animations that a lot of the people in the SpaceX community have been creating over the last few months and years it's just truly awesome to see man and I love the idea too or the you know the, the fact that they do all this out in the open it's not done behind some cloak and dagger in a kind of you know um hard to reach area where they basically have the opportunity to ban everybody from taking pictures they do it right in the open people can take as many pics as loads of different people effectively earning create a whole different business um and revenue stream around it by being able to provide aerial photography and drone shots and whatnot it's just great man it really really is great to see um and you don't know the amount of people that is probably inspired you know outside to basically do their own thing as well so this is definitely awesome to see so yeah spacex starship has been placed on the super heavy booster super heavy booster. am i saying that right it is right super heavy booster um and yeah it looks absolutely marvelous it really does look marvelous i'm just really intrigued to see what it actually looks like once they finally um get the mechanism down that's going to catch this booster itself because effectively the idea is that you launch um the starship on top of the booster um obviously the booster is there to give it extra thrust so that once it reaches the outside that well, yeah once it reaches space then it kind of disconnects and continues on to its journey and then the booster itself comes back down to earth maybe gets refilled with fuel and then gets sent back up to refuel the space the starship and then comes back down again but once it comes back down it gets caught by this arm instead of it landing on its legs or whatnot which is going to be insane on the tower it gets caught by like a little arm thing that kind of you know brings it back to its orbital launch pad and then it kind of goes off again it's just going to be incredible to watch it happen in real time um especially if they happen to get it um within the time frame that they want which is kind of under an hour or something it's going to be incredible to see absolutely incredible to see um but what else do we have here buddy ba 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 let's move on we got that we got this i don't know why my computer is going really slow at the moment you know what maybe for now because i think this comp is really going slow for some reason i don't know why that is but let's um end it here even though it's only 51 minutes and then we're going to come back on the other side with another app yeah it's the actions yeah because I've, i think my computer is going really slow and it's kind of glitching every time i put stuff on the screen and whatnot so let's end it then and we'll come back on the other side so yeah this is the actions show episode number 482 thanks so much for tuning in as per usual um you know click uh, click all the links needed below to find me on your social medias and then of course share and you know give me a five star review in your apple podcast that'll be much appreciated and i'll see you guys again on the other side peace